Jordan tweets this about the election, and I do want to go over some of the election results, so let's get started. And you know what, we'll go over this article, and then I'll pose the question to you, um, what are your guys' feelings about the election results? Um, I feel like, once again, they're kind of mixed at best, and I think we're still waiting on a few things, too, at least last time I checked, that was the case. Egyptian American loses race for governor position in Michigan, and uh, yeah, Abdul Al Said. He uh, he won thirty one percent of the vote, and uh, his opponent fifty one percent. Whitmer was considered an establishment candidate for the Democrats, compared to her closest rival Al Said, who campaigned on a more left leaning progressive platform. The physician understands well the issue of public health in the U.S., having served as Detroit Health Department's executive director. Despite the loss, Al Said will undoubtedly. Uh, we can stop reading. Um, thank you for the article. Um, but my personal thing, I, I, I don't. Um, I'm not into taking a loss and tying a bow on it. It's not really my thing. So when an article does that, I just kind of clock out. Um, yeah, Al Said lost. Um, I believe Sarah Smith lost, uh, and I believe Dorothy Gasquet lost. I know that that guy in Kansas was ahead, but then there was apparently a computer glitch, and all of a sudden something happened, um, and now I, I, it didn't seem like it was, let me see if those are in. Last time I checked, they were not in. So now it's saying Brent Walder lost. And apparently Sarah Smith is too close to call. And we might not know for a few days. Here, let's go over to The Intercept. Here's a pretty good summary, I think. Notorious Ferguson prosecutor ousted in a night of victories and disappointments for insurgent candidates. Okay. Progressive Democrats heading into Tuesday primaries were hoping for a repeat of Bernie Sanders' 2016 shock victory in Michigan, only this time with Abdul Saeed. He lost. We know Abdul Saeed lost. And, uh, you know, if you want to put a bow on it, you know, you can do so on a different show, not this one. Uh, and the first wave of May primaries, okay. Democrats turn out on Tuesday night in surging numbers in Michigan. Well over 100,000 showed up. Uh, the enthusiasm among Democrats meant that Republicans needed everything they had in an Ohio special election. Republicans struggled to pull ahead by even one percentage point despite a rally by Trump. Race is still too close to call, as of right now. Rasha, Rashada Taliba, a progressive community organizer and former state legislator endorsed by Ocasio-Cortez, led in the race to replace John Connors in Congress. Okay, in Kansas, the Democratic Socialist duo campaigned for Brent Welder. And it looks like, so this guy was ahead, but then the other guy pulled ahead. A computer glitch set the rest of the vote counting back. It is weird that there was a computer glitch and then all of a sudden it's looking different. That's weird. <laughs> I'll just say that, that's weird. In St. Louis County, Bell's race for prosecutor was part of a national movement to bring about criminal justice reform. Elsewhere in St. Louis, Ocasio-Cortez campaigned hard for Cori Bush, a pastor, single mom, and nurse who challenged Lacey Clay Jr. Um, and I believe Cori Bush lost. Former NAACP president Ben Jealous emerged victorious. So there's some, they're kind of just doing an overall summary here. In a sense, the primary victories were the easy part. The true test for popular progress, for populists and progressives like Walter Thompson Kara Eastman in Nebraska and other candidates will come when their message is put up for scrutiny and up for grab seats in a general election. All right. So Dorothy Gasquet lost. Sarah Smith, still cl too close to call, but not looking good as of the recording of this. Washington 6th, good news. Ah, and another thing worth noting, Missouri struck down right to work. By, uh, by fairly overwhelming numbers. And yeah, Cori Bush lost, as we mentioned. So yeah, I'd, I'd say overall more losses than wins 
but um, but a couple things to be optimistic about. And I think that's a pretty generous summary, actually. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let's see. Greg Palace noted that half a million people were kicked off the voter rolls in Ohio. Uh, Rob says a miserable night. Missouri did good. People are already great blaming the Green Party. I don't know if you guys saw, but I uh, I pointed out that the Green Party ate my homework. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Green Party's fault. They were before any results were even in. People were blaming the Green Party. This I think people just have they have their auto tweet set to just blame the Green Party. Like like at noon on any given primary night or election night, they just have they just have a tweet automatically to go on. Be like Russia Green Party, their fault. Like before before the results even come in, they just have it on auto tweet to uh, to just blame them. Uh, all power to him. <laughs> so yeah, some things to be optimistic about. The the right to work thing is is a big victory. Um, but we definitely saw some pretty significant losses. You know, especially in Washington State. Although the sixth district, we got some good news. Sixth district, as Pasta points out, progressive Jessa Lewis did well. Brian says, Jill Stein ain't my homework's dog. That's funny. Was last night, Tim asks, was last night such a disappointment for progressives considering? I would say overall, yes. Um, yeah, I would say there were more losses than wins. And again, I mean, you know, if you guys want to tie up and put a bow on losses, go ahead. What does that accomplish? Does that accomplish anything? I don't think so. Um, you know, when it comes to electoral politics, you either get a W or you don't. And um, we haven't been getting many Ws. I mean, I mean, there's a few victories. There's a few reasons for optimism. There's a few policy reasons for optimism. Um, but I would say overwhelmingly, uh, a loss is a loss. Things didn't go good in Michigan. There were some reasons to be optimistic in Missouri, some not. Claire McCaskill's still in there. Um, and Jason points out, now we get to choose between two corporate tools in November here in Michigan. We are changing the narrative. No, we're not. Not in the electoral politics sense. No, we're not. I feel like it's unrealistic to believe that we are going to be seeing a ton of wins this year, though. I get that it sucks, but isn't this what we expected? To keep losing? I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I was hoping for wins. I mean, it's not about like what you were... I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say to that. I mean, I've certainly casted votes before where I knew the person I was voting for had no chance. Absolutely. Um, you know, usually on big levels like the presidential level or something like that. Um, I certainly don't go into smaller races thinking, yeah, there's no chance. And if you're working on a campaign with the attitude that, yeah, there's no chance, um, you should probably be doing something else. Honestly. I mean, you know, like, or if you're... I mean, yeah, at the presidential level, I voted for Jill Stein knowing she had no chance of seeing the White House. What I did think she had a chance at was getting 5%. So that the Green Party would get federal funding, so that maybe in the future we wouldn't only have two awful choices. So, you know, at a smaller level, like a congressional seat or a Senate, yeah, I'm hoping for victories. I'm not going in there uh, on the idea of, yeah, we're going to lose, and we're going to lose hard. And uh, Garden Gnome brings up something. Um, our answers lie outside of electoral politics. I, um, I agree. And, um, that's something I want to start focusing on a little more on this show, too. I mean, you know, I want to talk about election results. And again, I'm not trying to be a total Debbie Downer. I, I think that there are some reasons for optimism, too. And I'm not going to say, okay, that's over. Um, I'm thrilled that Missouri struck down right to work. That is great. Um, I'm happy about Washington 6th. Uh, I'm happy that there was a larger turnout than usual. 
you know, I, I mean, in Michigan, there was a huge turnout, Democrats compared to Republicans, and I think that's because of more progressive policies being represented. And uh, I'd rather see a whole new party start. And this is one of those reasons why. See, a lot of people, they think that um, when you have these progressives, Dem entering, you know, a lot of people just think it's kind of the same platform, that the platform that they like will be represented later in politics. So this, they're just going to vote for the incumbent because the most important thing is picking off the Republican. That's really kind of what you're embracing. So I think if you go the step further and say, no, this is totally different, and this isn't the Democratic establishment, well, then we have a chance to really start something new from the ground up. And it wouldn't necessarily be from the ground up if we had names like Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, Nina Turner, Jill Stein, if we had those kind of names attached to it. And that's why I'm more for starting a whole new party. And, uh, you know, because, you know, again, right now that, that's just not going to happen. So a lot of good progressives running, they, they pretty much see Dem entering as their only viable option. And in the short term, it, it seems like that's pretty true, unfortunately. But... But I think a lot of people are, I think we're just losing because of passivity. And, and for the people that think because we're infiltrating the Democratic Party, we're pulling the wool over people's eyes somehow, you're wrong because we're losing for the most part. We're losing. Casella West, I can't even convince my friends that Russia is a scam. This is going to take time with our media feeding the beasts. Wendy, the platform is not as popular as you think. Polls are inaccurate everywhere, but the ballot box. Well, single-payer health care is favored by over 60% of Americans. When Medicare for All was put on a Fox News poll, Fox News, 73% of people were in favor of it. Um, Bernie Sanders gets standing ovations in the heartland. Ocasio-Cortez is filling up stadiums. People favor tuition-free college by an over 50% margin. People favor the idea of good, sustainable jobs. That's very true in the heartland. That's why Hillary lost the heartland, because she had no message when it came to jobs. Donald Trump did. They were lies, but it was a, a message at least. People were so desperate, they took a chance on lies, because they knew they couldn't take a chance on nothing. So, uh, no, I, I do think the platform's pretty popular. I think we have a messaging issue. Dana points out, I still get blamed by people on Twitter for Hillary Clinton losing because I voted for Dr. Jill Stein. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what was I thinking? That we're living in a democracy? The audacity. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah. Go through it together and make it our own. Get your 